Hello everyone, I'm joined by head coach of Luminosity, Unter, and we're here to talk about a lot of things, patch changes, bracket changes, but first I want to talk a little bit about the team, because you come in in a bit of a weird situation where the team's sort of already formed, you just come in at the end and you have to you have to even fill Big Chrissy's shoes, so what is, what's it been like coming into the team and... Yeah, well, that's kind of like, that's kind of my MO usually is I like join pre-established teams that have like, you know, lots of synergy and an understanding of the game already. And then I just take the credit for any of their success that they had. Um, so I feel like, you know, this seemed like the perfect job for me just based on that. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, like I came in and Luminosity, they, they were they were off a bit of a low um, from the Chrissy times. I don't think it's so much an indictment of Chris, but, you know, it might just not have been their meta. And then, like, the day that I joined the team, we have this, like, big shake-up patch. The hitboxes get changed. Everything's totally different. Everyone's experimenting with everything. And suddenly the team is like, yeah, well, whatever. We'll just play We'll just play anything, you know? Nobody can call <laughs> back to the past and be like, oh, we were doing this, so we need to play like this always. And nobody, nobody was arguing. It was just, like, a couple of weeks of chill. So I got to just show up and do the, the general vibe check of the team. And um, it, it was nice. It's been good to to fill Chrissy's very large, almost clown-sized shoes. <laughs> well, you almost got like a blank slate out of nowhere, essentially. Yeah, well, it's like semi-blank, you know. It's, it's not like I don't know the majority of the players on Luminosity or didn't know them in advance, you know. It's like I've got Dante there who, uh, you know, we, he and I, we have some we have some history, you can put it that way. <laughs> but um, the, the majority of the roster, it's like, you know, we, we were already mates or we were already acquaintances at, at worst, you know. Even Vision Live, who I'd never had a real conversation with, he wound up on my Gladiator's um scrim account friends list somehow and we used to just message each other during scrims when we were bored like never never knew like really what was going on but we would just spin nonsense at one another so like i've basically interacted with everyone before joining the team and then what does it look like from like a in-game com structure thing like do you have like the big guy who's like the shot caller or the fight planner or is it split up a little more um, I guess the tanks are both pretty big talkers, you know, whether it's Dante or False in, they both have both have their thing. False is like a real, real big talker, you know, like you get real leadership figure vibes out of False. Whereas with Dante, you know, he's got a little bit more of um more of a calm way of speaking, we'll put it that way. You know, he's he's a bit quieter. Not to say that he doesn't know what to say and that he isn't assertive or whatever, but you know, Dante is just a little bit of a quieter boy than False. But everyone on the team can talk, you know, it's not a bunch of not a bunch of mutes and then the one old Overwatch League tank, you know pushing them along it you know it's, it's a bunch of like fairly developed players so everyone talks except um, the king maybe <laughs> and do you have then like also like a I don't call it, like an emotional leader or like a captain type figure if like things are not going all your way you will pick them up between maps no the thing, things just always go our way so i'm yet to experience that <laughs> cross that bridge when we come to it yeah dattle <laughs> and how does the because we get with a lot of especially like the toronto types they're like hitting the triple block and everything quite often what does your practice schedule look like bearing in mind they're all in college still and trying to balance yeah we're, uh, we're, we're not that team you know like i think it's important to recognize that like you know luminosity is also maryville um and Maryville is a college program. So these guys, they all have like classes, they have exams, they have educations that they also need to be worrying about. So while, you know, they want to be like as good of an Overwatch team as they possibly can be, you know, the team wants to win everything that they can. There's also an element that they're balancing it with something else, you know, they're balancing it with something very real that's providing them with the opportunity to play the game in the first place. So I definitely think that we're not like the, the crackdown three hour, um, not three hour, three hour review, triple block, Thing, because that's been that's been happening in maybe the past week for OWCS. You've seen all of the uh, the big dog teams start to just like go insane with their schedules, start triple blocking a lot. And I, th I thought the days of triple blocking were done after Al was done, to be honest. But apparently, people still have that dog in them. But um, yeah, the boys at Maryville, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that we have that dog in us because people are in class during the triple block times. <laughs> so there really they, there isn't the time of day to fit it all in for most of these guys. And then that probably also adds to the stress if, say, somebody kept changing the patch on you all the time and giving you a brand new meta to solve every couple of days. So you managed to skip the first patch change sort of because you got straight out of groups. But how were you adapting to that initial, like, the Malga buff patch? Um, look, I mean, 
I don't think it's actually that bad to have these patch changes. I think people love to cry about how difficult it is competitively to need to, you know, retool all of your strategy two days before the tournament or whatever. But because I'm like a famously fraudulent coach, I never had any strategy to begin with. So it actually suits me just fine when everything comes tumbling <laughs> down and we have to restart because my, my team never really gets past step one in terms of fundamentals. <laughs> so it actually suits me really well. But um, in all seriousness, I don't think it's that big of a deal. You know, the MAGA patch came out. We had a long weekend or something. I think the, I think the players had some school-related stuff, and then we took a day off. Like, um, And then we start grinding the MAGA patch, and it's just the same fucking mirror everywhere. Everyone is just playing MAGA, Sojin, Sim all the time, everywhere. And it's like, what happened to Sombra Reaper? And it's like, oh, no, Korea gave up on that 36 hours ago. Get a grip, mate. <laughs> um, so we just find this one comp that is allegedly the best ever. Everyone starts grinding it. All of NA is playing it. And then you hear the murmurs, you go into bed one night and you hear the murmurs that they're going to hotfix the, ch the patch. And it's like, oh, okay, I can sleep well tonight knowing I don't need to prepare a review for tomorrow. Um, I wake up and there we go. It's been, it's been refreshed. Um, I mean, I think Maryville's a pretty good rush team, you know, like the fundamentals are all there. Got um, Dante and Falls are both like very, very competent rush tanks. You know, they have a good idea of uh, like push and pull um, and the general like alt economy game that needs to be played there. And I think that like with either of those players at the head, any of these metas are very comfortable for the team because people have a good understanding of how it needs to go from the top down. Does it provide a bit of a problem, though, when, like, obviously you've got, like, two main tanks who can both potentially play the role, but all of a sudden everyone only gets, what, like, two blocks each before you have to sort of pick who's the um, man? Yeah, this is a little difficult for me. I don't think it bothers the players that much. I think, like, Dante and False are both pretty adult about this stuff. Or maybe they're just old, you know, they don't care whether I bench them. They're like, fuck it, like, free, free PTO. Um... <laughs> But, you know, it's a little difficult for me, like, right when the patch came out, because I always joke that we have, like, two retirement home tanks because these guys are both, like, 40 years old and somehow they both managed to miss the initial Malga release. So, like, when this patch came out a week ago, <laughs> these guys are both, like, basically learning Malga for the first time. So I was trying to figure out, like, who's who's definitely better at this? And it's, like, they're pretty much at the same level, you know? At some point, I'm just, like, picking for intangibles because, like, they're at a fairly similar level, it feels like. But, um, I don't know, at the end of the day, it's, like, the players are bugging me saying, oh, you know, maybe you should commit to one tank. It's easier if we have just like one person stylistically. And I just thought, fuck you guys. Like, I'm going to give them both a fair shot before I kill one of them at the 11th hour. <laughs> and then do you feel now we're, we're, we've reverted it and it has been hot fixed? Do you prefer, do you think your team is stronger on this version than on the Malga version? Um, I don't think I don't think it's right to say whether we're stronger or weaker on the new patch. To be honest, not to sound like a cuck or anything, but it's like we we played the Maga patch for like two days, you know, and then we've played this patch for like two days, and one of those two days we've just first cummy teams, you know, like we just first teams where there's not like the whole lot of competition. So it's like pretty difficult to get a read of like how strong are we on this patch compared to the last one when it's like we, we basically played like four blocks. Day or patch, bad day. You know? like it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit it's a bit early to say to be perfectly honest. And I mean, we are about to roll into the tournament and maybe these teams that, you know, have been like triple blocking and really grinding it out, maybe they're going to have a little bit of an edge on that. But I'm not a I'm not a huge believer in that, to be honest. I think most people fall into the trap of like taking a lot of mirrors or getting like very, very one side, um, one dimensional in terms of their understanding of like how things are going to go. And they try and focus on one plan and one idea. And then, you know, like when match day comes around, I'm not sure whether that holds up. I mean, if we look at your first match, should be a straightforward one versus Shikigami, unless something goes really wrong. Yeah, no, but I then, fucking hope so. Um, <laughs> yeah. But then you then sort of find yourselves, oh, so the bracket's gone back and forth. So you were going to have the Timeless and Pirates as your potential next team to play, but now you've got Students of a Game or M80. Are you happier, less happy with this version of a bracket, or is it all? I don't, I don't really care, to be honest, you know? I've heard people say, oh, timeless and match day chokers. And then it's like timeless, like dog fight, absolute dog fight to go versus M80. And then like M80, all of their matches, they look super beatable. You know, I mean, it's like they lose a map five to timeless. Um, they they like absolutely dog fighting versus tread to to get to like, you know, a, a very narrow 3-0 victory, I want to say it was. So I think that like whichever side of the bracket we wound up on, you know, like I don't think we should be too concerned. I think like luminosity, you know, we're, we're probably fighting for like that... Um, uh, the, these guys seem to be around the same level when you watch them in matches. So I think whatever side of the bracket we wind up on is not the end of the world. It's better to be away from Toronto's side of the bracket, though. I'll, I'll keep it a buck with you. You know, that team might be a cut above the other ones by just, just a tiny bit. Do you think then, because I think that's the picture a lot of people have of North America is there's like Toronto, then there's a bunch of teams, and then there's sort of maybe like 
the bottom of the top eight teams. Do you think that gap is then pretty significant between Toronto and like all the chasers? Um, it feels that way. I, I think so. Yeah. I don't think that, um, I think that M80 will probably get like stronger when their Korean players get over to North America. You know, when those guys aren't playing on ping, I think that you'll see like a pretty significant upgrade to like their roster level. But I think right now, like for these online tournaments, especially like OWCS, it forces the matches to be played on East. You know, these teams, they scrim on West because they get tilted about the ping. And then they play a match on uh, on like East or Central, which is East, you know, it's the same thing um, in terms of the server location just about. So like, I, I think that these teams are like pretty heavily handicapped if they have overseas players. Like if they have Korean players, they have a really big ping disadvantage come match day. Is there any then, outside of Toronto, who's, are any other teams you're worried about playing or you think will maybe be like the toughest one to get past? No, not really. I think, um, again, like... Uh, M80 and Timeless both. I mean, we're going to play M80 in the bracket, right? So I think M80, you know, like from our side of the bracket is obviously the, the big important team that we need to be like thinking about and thinking, oh, damn, like this is the one, you know? We beat these guys. We have like a really good chance of going deep in the bracket. We lose to these guys and it's kind of more like, oh, we're probably flipping a coin to see, um, you know, we're going up against Timeless and that's probably going to be a, a similar level team. But I'd say M80 and Timeless are the two teams that we're thinking about the most. If we find ourselves versing Toronto, um, I mean, that that's like deep in the bracket already. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to be pretty unfortunate to run into a lower bracket Toronto or something. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, if you're running into a lower bracket Toronto, it's probably an indictment on Toronto at the same time. <laughs> it's probably right? a good time to play Toronto. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. So then if you had to pick a team, and maybe I'll excl- exclude your own team for your own bias, but exclude Toronto as well because that's the obvious choice, Who's the, who would win it if you and Toronto fell off a cliff tomorrow? Or if today? we and Toronto fell off a cliff? Um... I mean, I'd probably have to back Timeless just on the on the history, right? Just because they beat M80 the previous time. But I mean, it, it'd be one of M80 or Timeless, and I feel like it would just be an absolute dogfight scrap fest to see who fucking shits the bed harder on Map 5, to be honest. And then do you think, outside of that, are LFO and students of a game, I think most people see them in like the tier below they're this. Way, they're way weaker. I'd, I'd way say, off, that's like, like a big break. A, I'd say there's like a really big tier break for sure. Okay. Like not, yeah, not even close. I think people initially thought like that WD40 LFO team would be like around about the same level as, as M80 or something, but like there's a really there's a really big gap. Yeah, I think both of the teams are also like quite new as well in terms of like coming together, don't have any sort of buff like that maybe you and Timeless have as well of at least knowing each other and having experience together. Yeah, I mean that's something where it's like I um maybe I sleep on that a little bit because I wasn't there for the formation of all that that synergy or whatever, so I don't really know what the um what the fresh team feels like compared to this one. But yeah, I mean, I guess we have a little bit of an advantage there. These guys have been playing together for ages. All right, then. Thank you very much, Max. I appreciate your time and good luck. Good luck. Well, today, today, tomorrow, time zones. Yeah, it's I in know, several it's like hours. hours. It's, like, it's yeah. like eight hours from now. We verse Shikigami or whatever their name is. Yeah. Shikigami, oh, actually, for, right. the, for the M80 timeless question, timeless will win because Rockets make stuff. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> that one. How did you forget? No, that was, that was dumb. That was my bad. <laughs> All right. Thank you. No worries. Thanks.